from Chicago, it's theCUBE. Covering Veritas Vision Solution Day 2018. Brought to you by Veritas. Welcome back to the Windy City, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're going out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. We're here at the Veritas Vision Solution Days in Chicago. We were just a few weeks ago. We were at uh, the iconic Tavern on the Green in New York City. We're here at the Palmer House Hotel. Beautiful hotel, right, right, right in downtown Chicago, near the, the lake. It's just an awesome venue. It's great to be here. Arista Thurman III is here. He's the principal computer engineer at the Argonne National Labs. Great to see you, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, good to be here, thanks. So, so tell the audience about Argonne National Labs. What are you guys all about? Uh, about science, so we're, we're all about the advancement of science. We do a lot of different experiments from technology for batteries and chemistry, and um, the project I work on is the advanced photon source, which is a light source that's used to collect data and experiments with uh, a photon source. Okay, so you're an IT practitioner. That is correct. Serving scientists. Yes. What, what's that like? Is that like an IT guy serving doctors? Are they kind of particular? <laughs> a little bit. There, there's some challenges there, but yeah, it's great. So basically you, you have a unique customer base and they have a additional requirements. So it's not like a normal customer base. They're very smart people. Um, they have a lot of demands and needs and we do our best to provide all the services that they require. Yeah, so given that they're, I mean, they're, they're technical people, they may not be IT people, but they have an affinity to technology. So first of all, they must be hard to BS them, right? <laughs> no doubt, no they doubt. They cut through that, and so you got to be straight with them. Um, and they're probably pretty demanding, right? I mean, they, they have limited resources and limited time and limited budgets, and they're probably pounding you pretty hard, or is that, is that the case, or are they more forgiving? They're great people to work with, but there, there can be some challenges, I mean, um, it's unique in an idea that they work on multiple platforms. So it's from Unix to Linux to Mac, multiple computers and offices, multiple data requirements, and a lot of things happen without a lot of uh, process and planning. Some things are, are ad hoc, so it, it puts a little bit of strain sometimes on you to try to make all, everything happen in, in the amount of time they have. And, and everything is, um, it's not, um, there's some challenges with regard to how to get things done in a timely fashion when you, you don't know what's going to happen with these, some of these experiments. I mean, I, I imagine, right, they can probably deal with a lot of um, uncertain processes because that's kind of their, their lives, right? And you, you must have to cobble things together for them to get them a solution sometimes. Is that the case? We do sometimes. I think uh, we, 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 it's, it's all about getting enough funding, enough resources to take care of all the different experiments. That Balancing act. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so you look after compute and storage. Yes. Right, um, so, so talk about uh, what's, ha what's happening you know, generally there and then specifically data protection. So in general, my primary focus is Linux, Linux administration, Red Hat Linux. Mm -hmm. And um, we've seen a, a lot of data growth over the, the last five years and we got projections for more growth as we are planning for um, an upgrade. So we're going to change our beam line, make it more efficient, have a better light source, and that's all planning in the next two or three years. And so there's a lot of uh, extra projects on top of our normal workload. Um, we have a lot of equipment that probably needs to be refreshed. Um, there's resources, and with, with, with IT and any kind of data management, um, things change. So whatever we're doing today, in the next three years, we'll be doing something different because things change with regard to CPU speeds, performance of I.O., networking, storage requirements, all those things are continually growing exponentially. So, and when scientists want to do more experiments and they get new resources in, it's going to require more resources for us to uh, maintain and, and keep them operational at, at the speeds and, and performance they want. Yeah, we do hundreds of events with theCUBE. We do about 130 events this year, and a lot of them are so-called big data you know, uh, orientation. And when you go to those, those data-oriented events, you hear a lot of, uh, of sort of the roots of that, or at least similarities to the scientific, you know, technical computing areas, and it's sort of evolved into big data. A lot of the disciplines are, are similar. So you're talking about a lot of data here. Uh, sometimes it's really fast data, um, and there's a lot of variety, presumably, in, 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 that, in that data. So how much, how much data are we talking about? I mean, is it huge volumes? And maybe you could describe your data environment. Um, 
primarily we, we have things broken up into different areas. So we have some block storage and, and that provides a lot of our virtual, at the back end for our virtual relationship environments, which is either Microsoft or Red Hat yeah. Rev. Um, um, I, I would estimate that's somewhere in a petabyte range. And then we also have we have our NAS file systems, which spread across multiple environments, providing NFS version three and four, and also to Windows client SIS, and some of the Mac clients also use, utilize that. And that's at about a little less than a petabyte. And we also have um, H HSPC, high performance computing, mm -hmm. and that's a couple, couple petabytes at least. And all those, all those numbers are just estimate because we're yeah. constantly growing. You know, no, right. Any given time, it's uh, it's yeah. changing. But you're talking about multiple petabytes. So how would you? How do you back up? How do you protect multiple petabytes? Well, uh, I think it, it has to. Uh, it's, it's all about um, a balancing act because mm -hmm. it's hard to back up everything in that same time windows. We have multiple backup environments providing resources for individual platforms. Like for Windows, we do something a little different than we do for Linux. And we have different retention policies. Some environments need to be retrained. Retention is three years, and some is six months, some three months. And so you have to kind of uh, have a system of uh, migrating the storage to faster disk, and then layer off the tape for longer, long, long term retention. So uh -huh. it, it's a challenge that uh, we're constantly fighting with. How, how do you use Veritas? Your customer, obviously, and. and yeah, we, we've been a Veritas customer for um, many years, and we utilize Veritas in our um, virtualization environments. Um, they kind of help us have a central platform. We, we've actually explored other things, but the most cost-effective thing to us at this point has been Veritas. Um, we utilize them to back up primarily our NAS and our block files, the block file systems that provide most of the virtualization. Why Veritas? Why, I mean, what is it about them that, that you have an affinity for and there's a zillion other backup software vendors out there, why Veritas? I think um, we, we have invested a lot in Veritas over the years and so predate my time at mm -hmm. Argon, we've been using Veritas in my previous career at some microsystems, we also had some kind of uh, relationship with Veritas. So it's easy and I think we, like I mentioned earlier, we explored other things but it wasn't cost effective to make that kind of change. And it, it's, it's been a reliable product. It, it does require work, but it has been a reliable product, so. Mm. So, you mentioned uh, you, you, your Linux, Red Hat uh, Linux. Yes. You, so you saw this, IBM announced it's going to buy Red Hat for $34 billion. Yeah. What were your thoughts when you, when you heard that news? Uh, I was like, wow, what is going to happen now? I mean, is that going to, what is that, I was like, how is that going to impact us? Is it going to change our licensing model or, if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. Right now, we just don't really know. We're just kind of waiting and seeing. But it's like, okay, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big, a, a biggest deal, I think, certainly from IBM. Their biggest previous deal was, I think, Cognos at five billion. So this dwarfs that. Um, uh, the deal, of course, doesn't close probably till the second half of 2019, so it's going right. to take a while. But yes. look, I mean, let's look. At, IBM is known when it buys software companies. You saw this with SPSS. You've seen it with other companies that it, that it buys. It, 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 it oftentimes will change the pricing model. Um, how do you license Red Hat? Do you uh, do you have an enterprise license agreement with you know offhand or we we do have an agreement with them. Yeah, and lock that in. Lock that long term in now one before of my, the deal goes down. One of my counterparts is in charge of that part of it, so uh, I'm sure we'll be having that conversation shortly. Yeah, interesting. All right, well, listen, uh, Arista, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Really appreciate your Thank insights, you. and it's great appreciate to meet it. you. All, All right, right, welcome. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We're, this is a wrap from Chicago. Uh, this has been theCUBE, Veritas Vision Days, where check out siliconangle.com for uh, all the news. Thecube.net is where you'll find these videos and a lot of others. You'll see where the cube is next, wikibon.com for all the research. Thanks to the team here, appreciate your help on the ground. We're out from Chicago. This is Dave Vellante, we'll see you next time.